Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna go through how to do file IO or file input output in Java. There are a few ways to do Java file reading and Java file writing. I'm gonna show you just one example for each. So I don't want you to think by any means that the way I'm showing you is the only way to solve the problem. There are other classes, other types in Java that you can use to do file IO. In this video, I'm gonna show you using scanner to read from a file and print stream to write to a file. So let's first take some notes. There's a standard file processing template. It's pretty short, just three steps. The first step is to open the file. The second step is to process the file. And this means read from the file input or write to the file output. And then number three, often many beginner programmers forget this, close the file when you're done with it. All right, let's start with file input. So this would be reading from a file. This is the I of the IO. So we need to have a file to read from. I'm gonna create a file called words.txt and I'm just gonna put a bunch of words in it. And we'll read all of those words from words.txt and print them out to the console. I'm using an IDE, an integrated development environment called IntelliJ IDEA. And it has a project structure for different code projects. So the current working directory for my code executing in main is going to be my top level project directory over here. My project's called file fun. So it's in a folder called file fun. So I could create a file in file fun many different ways. I could do it from terminal. I could do it from finder or windows file explorer but I'm gonna just right click on file fun in IntelliJ, do new file and create words.txt. So words.txt is blank. I'm just gonna add a bunch of words to it. Doesn't really matter what I put in here because I'm just gonna read it line by line and echo it back out to the console. made up some fun text in here. All right, back in main, we're gonna write some code to read each one of these lines from words.txt and print them to the console. So I'm gonna use scanner to do this. So I'm gonna have scanner in file, which will initially be null. Then I'm going to try and assign to in file a new scanner object set up to read from a file and this file is going to be called words.txt. You will need to import java.io.file as well as java.util.scanner. So I'm specifying here a relative path. This is a relative path because it doesn't start with root and root looks like this on a Unix machine and it doesn't start with a drive and a drive looks like this on a Windows machine. So this is relative, not absolute, and I can specify a relative path to words.txt because it's in my current working directory. It's right here. Now this isn't compiling and it's not compiling because the scanner constructor, when you pass in a file reference, throws a java.io.file not found exception. Okay, this has nothing to do with what I'm passing in as my path here. Okay, I could pass in a different path and I would still get this. So we need to try to create a new scanner object and then catch this file not found exception in case at runtime this words.txt file actually isn't found. Now if you're not familiar with exceptions that's okay still follow along but check out my other video where I go through many examples of checked and unchecked exceptions in Java. This is an example of a checked exception because our code isn't compiling. We're getting a compiler error because we're not handling the exception by putting a try catch around it or by putting throws on our method header. So I'm going to surround this code with try and I'm going to catch the exception that it throws possibly, which is a file not found exception. I could do e.printStackTrace in here, but instead I'm just gonna show a little message to the user 
saying something like file not found. Now I'm not done at all by any means uh, with my file processing template. I'm still working on one, but let's run this and make sure that we do not see file not found. Okay, we do not see file not found and we see exit code zero, so our program did not crash. So it looks like we were able to successfully create a scanner for reading from the words.txt file. Wonderful. Now it's time for step two, process the file. So I'm gonna have a while loop and my while loop is going to have a Boolean condition that in file has another line for us to read from. So this has next line is kind of like scanner peeking and looking at the file and seeing, is there more input to consume? It's not actually gonna consume or read any values from the file, it's just peeking and looking ahead. So if this is true, then there's something to be read from the file. So I'm going to have a string line that will store the return value from infile.nextline. Infile.nextline returns all of the text until it reaches a new line character and it does not return that new line character into this string. It does, however, remove the new line character from the file processing buffer, or it skips over it. And I'll just print this out. So here is step two, process the file. Here's all the lines in my file. And I just want to emphasize that they're on their own lines because I'm using sysnotout.println, print line. If I were to remove this, they'd all be jammed together on one line. Okay, so that's just emphasizing that next line is returning all the text up to but not including the new line character. And I'll put that back in here. Even though everything's working, we're not done. So step three, close the file. So I'm going to have in file dot close. I'm done with my scanner, so I should close its input stream and free up some resources. Always good practice to do, especially when writing files. So that's our minimal example of reading from a file in Java. So now let's move on to file output. So this would be writing to a file. I'm going to use print stream in order to write to a file, but there are other Java types you could use, such as file writer. So let's do print stream. So print stream out file gets new print stream, and we're going to pass in a new file for out.txt. So I've got to import some things here, uh, print stream in java.io. And I've got that same file not found exception giving me a compiler error here. So we know what to do here. We're going to put this in a try and we're going to catch that file not found exception. And my output here is going to be unable to open file for writing. This file doesn't exist, but this line here is going to create it. Why I like to use print stream is because you can treat it just like you treat system.out. They're actually both output streams. So I'm going to do out file dot print line and I could pass in something like this is my first line in my output file. And I'll close my output file and I'll run this. Okay, so right here, output file.close, that's actually where I'm writing to the buffer and that buffer's being written out to the file on disk. And now I can see that I have out.txt, and I'll click on it, and it shows what I printed to it. So that's nice. Do a little more comprehensive example here, and let's say I wanna print out a bunch of numbers. I'm going to print out, let's say, 10 random six-sided die throws. So you know your standard six-sided die. 
let's pretend that we need to write out the results of throwing one of those die 10 times. So I'm going to need a random object in order to do this. So I'm going to do outfile.println and you can see I can pass in any of our uh, primitive types as well as a reference type. So I'm going to pass in an integer. So I'll do rand.nextint passing in 6 as the bound. So this will give me a number in the range 0 through 5 inclusive. Then I just add 1 in order to get a number in the range 1 through 6 inclusive. Now I go to out and there are my 10 random six-sided die throws. So that concludes, <clears throat> that concludes my minimal working examples of file input, reading from a file, and file output, writing to a file. Just to show you real quickly before I close the video, you can see that print stream extends java.io.filter output stream. And if I head over to uh, system.out right here, I'm going to see that system.out is actually a print stream as well. So that's why system.out and my out file both have similar methods, such as print line, print, printf, etc. And you could actually close, I'm not saying you want to, but you could actually close the system.out print stream as well with system.out.close. Okay, so these are actually the same types. Out file here is a print stream, and system.out, which is automatically open for you, is also a print stream as well. All right, hope you feel more comfortable with Java File.io, and thanks for watching this video.